Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see, I am Beyond Max. This is a supplement store I used to own for about two and a half years. And I'm gonna show you guys how to open a supplement store, how to go about it, how much money you're gonna need to get it started, kind of where to put it, what to expect for revenue and all that good stuff. So if you're ready to get it started and I'm ready to do it for you, let's go. All right guys, first and foremost, when it comes to opening a supplement store, you have to make sure that it is actually viable in your hometown, that it will actually fit in your hometown and it's not something that's overloaded and just isn't needed. When it comes to picking a location, you have to find something that is in a general popular area. I don't recommend putting putting it out of the way so people kind of have to struggle to find it. Um, I always find it easier that when you do open something like this that you want people to be able to stumble upon it pretty easy and it be pretty visible to the general public. You do kind of have to find that even ground where it is a popular area, but the rent isn't also super crazy. When I owned this store, my rent was $2,800 a month. I did have one up in Columbus and that one was about 4,500. That was way too much. But I also do know that some other ones are down as low as 1,000 to 1,200. So if you kind of find that even ground around two grand or so, that is kind of the sweet spot. You don't want to get smoked away on rent that is way too much, but you also don't want to have a store that is just way out of the way. It's in a terrible location or in a dead part of town and people just struggle to find it because you do want to have that natural organic um, walk by traffic or people that just stumble upon it on accident because it is in a popular area. Find that sweet spot and find that good rent that isn't astronomical and you will be good. Say you find a spot and you're ready to move forward. Now next you have to look into what do you have to put into this space to get it up and running. For me, I actually had a lot to do here. I put about $10,000 into this store to get it ready to what you see it as now. There is a catch for that. The place where I put my store here, um, they did give me a, actually a $10,000 credit to get this up and running. Now for you, if that isn't the case, make sure that when you find a spot, you don't wanna be putting a whole lot of money into it and just going into massive debt right off the rip. Find a place where you can just slap some paint on, some flooring, put all your shelving and product in, and you're good to go. When it comes to your space, you guys are probably wondering on how big it should be. My store here is actually pretty big. It was 1,800 square foot, but we chopped it down to 1,000 of showroom, and then I have about another 800 in the back for storage. An ideal space is around 900 to 1,000. I would say 1,000 on the top end. I wish I would have made mine a little smaller um, because as you can see, I do have high ceilings here, so it does make it look massive. So kind of what you wanna do is if say at 900 square feet with high ceilings, you can pack the store. It's going to look big, but it's going to be smaller so your store will seem more packed and more full. So when people come in here, you kind of get that wow factor. You don't wanna have people coming in here and you have some massive store and you can't fill it full of product. So then it just looks empty and it kind of just looks bad on you. So keep the store smaller around 900 square feet to a thousand at max and then pack it full of all your product. Now, how much product do you want to put in here? I recommend right about $40,000 of wholesale product. I usually hung around 30 to 40, 40 being in my busy times, 30 when it's kind of slow and I can kind of pull back my inventory. But right in the sweet spot is about 40K. You can pack full a 900 square foot store with $40,000 worth of product and it will be perfect. All right, so let's say that you have $40,000 worth of product in here. You have your space. How much, more, how much more money should you expect to spend? Now, you're also obviously gonna need shelving, you're gonna need signage on your front windows and on your building, and you're gonna kinda need your odds and ends stuff like your cash register and your desk and all that good stuff. So when I opened my store here, it did cost me about $60,000 roughly from start to finish to kinda get everything in here from product to signage to shelving all the way down to cash register. 
price tags, all that good stuff, I was right about $60,000 all in. That's actually not that much. Um, opening a supplement store is relatively cheap. You don't have to invest in all this massive equipment. You don't need all this super expensive stuff. The majority of the stuff in your store is obviously going to be your product that you are gonna be selling. That's actually what was attractive to me when I did this. Um, I also owned a landscaping company back in the day. And with all the equipment and all the tools I needed, it was just astronomical about how much money I was spending. So when I did this and I found out we were gonna be right around 60 grand, I absolutely loved it. So when you think about about opening a store you should look to spend right around 60 grand I mean you might go up or down from there depending on where you're at and the price of stuff but that is a general good idea of where you will be next you want to move into what vendors do you want to pick up what stuff do you want to carry in your store now this is a very very important piece a lot of people that want to do this will simply want to open a store and just slap every big brand name of supplements in their store I highly advise against that. A lot of the big companies like Optimum, for example, they are extremely hoard out brands. That means you can buy them anywhere. I know here in town we have a Dick Sporting Goods and they actually sell Optimum Gold Standard Way. So you do have to be careful that you're not putting a bunch of stuff in your store that is readily available everywhere. If you can go across the street to Walmart or Meyer or just to like a sporting goods store and buy this stuff, they are going to smoke you on prices because they are obviously a big box store and they can out by you and just pretty much squash you and that's not something that you want you want to find good solid brands that aren't everywhere for example rule one here rule one is actually the old owners of optimum they're a big part of the supplement world but they're not to the point where they're just so hoard out that you can buy them literally everywhere you want to find good companies that aren't everywhere that aren't smoked out on amazon that aren't available at every single grocery store you want a company that is going to be kind of unique to your store in a sense and one that is going to support you that is also something that is huge you have to make sure that when you do pick up a brand or you pick up a new vendor what are they going to do for you are they going to be easy to get a hold of? Are they going to send you sample support? Say you want to do an event. Are they going to be sending out demo people to help you? Are they generally just going to be a good brand that wants to help you? That is something that over the years I have been in and out on vendors, getting rid of them, keeping them. That is a big thing. Are you willing to support me? Are you willing to come? Are you willing to send people out here to demo and to help me out so I can push the product? What are you willing to do for me? I'm buying your product. So what are you going to do for me to help my store grow, et cetera? That also kind of ties in to that you don't want to pick up every single just underground brand out there you want to be careful because if you get just super off the map with some of these brands call it what it is the supplement industry is a pretty shady industry and anyone can literally pick up a bottle and put something in it it's not regulated it's not fda cleared all that good stuff so you want to make sure that you're not carrying a super just off the map brand it doesn't really know what they're doing because you don't want to hurt somebody you don't want to be selling people stuff that is isn't even what it's marketed as so you don't want to, you do want to be careful on the on each kind of Side of it you don't want to do super big box brand to where you're gonna get smoked on price but then again you don't want to get some super cheap brand that really is gonna be terrible for you or your customers just gonna give you a bad reputation down the road now, let's say that you find all your vendors you're ready to start getting a hold of them and you're ready to start ordering how do you go about it Do you go through a distributor like Europa Do you go direct to them how do you want to do it the best way to go about it is you always want to go direct. You always want to go to that company to order from that company when you can. And for a couple of different reasons. One, you're going to be able to buy it cheaper. When you go through a distributor, you have a middleman. That means they are buying it from that company. They are charging a price and then they are selling it to you for another higher price. And then you are upselling again and selling to your customer. That starts making stuff kind of expensive. So you want the least amount of people in the middle as possible. So if you go direct to the company, you can get better buying power, you, you can get cheaper wholesale, and a lot of times they will work with you better and you can get better support when you're speaking directly with the company. There are a few things that when I had this store that I never went direct on, a lot of that stuff is like food items, drinks, stuff like that. A lot of those companies won't work with you anyways. And it's not like you want to do that because a lot of times those minimums are going to be extremely high. I mean, I don't want to spend $300 on Lenny and Larry's cookies. It's just, it's way too much. So a lot of times that is kind of the upside when it comes to a distributor. You, I can buy all my food and I can buy all my drinks in one place and a few other select items. And you, you can collectively get your minimum together and it's a lot easier. 
that is, I would think, the main kind of advantage when going through a distributor. You can kind of get the um, that stuff that you need kind of ones and twos of, and you don't have to buy 10 to 15 of all these SKUs to hit a minimum. Now, when it comes to advertising and getting your business name out there, this can be a little tricky. I did it a little different than most. I didn't do a whole lot of advertising off the rip. I did some flyers, I did some social media stuff, um, but really at the very, very beginning, I just tried to get my name out there via my social media. I didn't pay for advertising. I didn't pay for the boost post, all that good stuff. I literally just put it on my Facebook and Instagram and had people share it. And then I would take flyers around to different businesses and gyms. And that was kind of um, an easier way for me to get it out there. I know a lot of people that will just spend and spend and spend and spend when it comes to marketing, rather than doing billboards, rather than putting in the paper, rather than doing the mail packs, and they're just spending thousands of dollars off the rip on advertising. Um, I personally don't like that. I think anymore, social media is obviously your biggest thing. And if you have a decent following, that can be the easiest way to do it. Um, even if you don't have a huge following, of course, you can start a page for your store or for your location, and you can pay you know, 40 to 50 bucks, boost it for a week, and that is going to do leagues above what a paper and billboard and kind of a mail pack would do. Um, you can target people that are interested in this stuff. You know, you don't have to send it out there and send it to some eight-year-old lady that likes to knit. You can literally pick people that are into weightlifting. You pick different genders. You can pick um, age range, all that good stuff. It is relatively cheap to do to post on Facebook. That was always my go-to. I would put it on my page. I would boost it on the store page. Then I would just ask people to share it. And that's what really worked the best for me. So if you do start the store, don't go haul off spending a whole bunch of money on advertising. Um, you don't need to. If you want to kind of put a strategy together once you're established, that is fine. Stay off the rip, stick with social media, be smart about it, target your location, target your town, and you will be good to go. That is going to be the best way to do it. Now, also something else to keep in mind, there are different seasons to the supplement business. As you guys probably know, when are the gyms the busiest? January and February, and when are they the most dead? Usually the end of the year, November, December. After September, those are my worst months, and my best months were January to kind of June or July. That is kind of your hay season. That is when people are going on vacations. That's when they're wanting to get back in shape for New Year's resolution. That's when there's weddings. That's when there's all this different stuff going on. There's warm weather. There's all this kind of incentive for people to get in shape, and then call it what it is. As the year goes on, people fall off, and they lose the gym they leave the gym and then you're kind of losing your customers as that goes and your revenue does go down what you will always keep you always kind of keep those hardcore guys but all the new people and all the people just getting into it they will fall off as the year goes down so those first six months of the year are going to be your most important. That's when you need to have a full store. I mean, that's when your store needs to be packed. It's when you need to be doing the most because that's when you're gonna have your most revenue. And then usually when it gets to September, October, November, then you can kind of cut your inventory down, keep what you need to keep, keep your expenses down, and you can ride it out until you get to the first of the year when you start making money again and when the gyms are full and all that good stuff. Now, what kind of income can you expect from a supplement store? Of of course, it is going to be different from town to town and location to location, but here in my Lancaster, Ohio location, in my first year of business, my first full year of business, which was 2016, I made about $300,000, $310,000 in gross revenue. And then my last year in business, which was only two years later, I think we grossed right about four hundred and forty dollars to $450,000. Um, that is kind of right in the middle for a supplement store. It's actually really good for a place like Lancaster. Lancaster only has about 40,000 people with a decent median house income. Uh, I have seen some supplement stores that are over a million, and I have seen some that are down under 100,000. If you live in a place like Lancaster, Ohio, with about 40,000 people, and you're averaging $30,000 to $40,000 a month, you are doing very, very well. And that's depending on if you have a good rent and if you have good products and you're not spending money on astronomical shit and just stuff you don't need. If you are doing about 30 or $40,000 a month in business, that is kind of a good spot to shoot for. Um, I was usually around 25 to 30 my first year and then close to the end of my last year, I was right around 40. Now say your store is open, your business as usual, everything's going great. You're staying on top of everything and everything's running the way it should be. How do you keep that going? How do you keep your business flowing? How do you keep 
people coming in? Do you wanna constantly be attracting new customers and new people? One of the biggest things and one of the most underrated things are demos. If you have a few gyms in town, reach out to some of these companies. These companies want you to sell their stuff. Whenever we would do demos at local gyms, these companies would pay for it. I wouldn't have to pay someone to stand there and pitch the product. These companies would literally say, hey, I want you to sell my product, so we're gonna send you a demo person that'll come there, that'll sample out all the products, and it'll do it for free. Usually they would do it one to two times a month. They could do in-store demos, they could do gym demos, literally anywhere you wanted to put them, they would be willing to do it. So think about that. That is another way of free advertising. It's another way of getting your business out there. They can be giving them a sample of protein or pre-workout in time, be giving out your coupons or business cards or whatever you wanna do. All right guys, I think that's gonna do it for today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully if this is something you're wanting to do, that it taught you something, it helped you out or answer any questions that you did have. If you do have any more questions or anything you specifically wanna know, reach out to me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I promise you I will get back to your message. If it takes me a little longer, I do apologize. I hate sitting on my phone for hours a day, um, just staring at a screen. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Frankly, it just gives me a headache. I do try to get back to these questions and comments as fast as I can. Just kind of give me a minute. If you are wanting to do this, if you are wanting to jump into this and you are sincere about it, then reach out to me. I will help you the best I can. If you're local to me or local to kind of around Ohio, I am more than welcome to give you my contacts for what vendors and what vendors I recommend and what vendors I don't recommend and help you out any way I can. I'm sure I missed something on this video. Video, I always do. I missed a lot on the SARM video. I missed a lot on the business Q&A. I always miss something. So later on when I'm editing this, I'm going to be pissed off that I forgot to mention something. So if I think about it, I will pin it to the top comment. As always, guys, I appreciate it. I love y'all. I'll see you later. See you guys.